Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Amy. Good afternoon. Good after. Good afternoon. Thank you. For... Okay. Long time no see. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you for indulging me lately. Uh, travel has been very complicated. Good afternoon, Gianna. Good afternoon, Brooke. Good afternoon. Sorry. Good afternoon, Diana. Good afternoon, Sarah. Good afternoon, Ashley. Good afternoon, Brianna. Good afternoon from Stephen. Top of the afternoon, Abdel. Good morning, Shakia. Good afternoon, Jalen. Goodbye, board. Good afternoon, Jasmine. Good afternoon, Samuel. Ajo. Good afternoon, Jamalet. All right. Awesome. Let's just uh, get rolling here. If I can. Oh, you're kidding. Hang on one second. Some fire. Hold on one second. Okay. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, David. Good afternoon, Jada. Awesome. And good afternoon, board. Please come back. We're going to get. Okay. All right, here we go. I think. Okay. All right, I'm just going to get rolled. Pardon me. I missed class Wednesday and then just had another delay there. So I'm just going to get rolling now. Please put any questions, etc. in the chat. But here, okay, what's on the board right now well, the top equation, <laughs> exactly. I mean, excuse me. The top equation is exactly where we left off, I believe, uh, last class. This was the result of um, this was the result of homework two. Sorry, this is. Good afternoon, Nicholas. Uh, good afternoon. All right. Uh, yes, and and well, it feels like morning in a way. All right. From part one, question G. I'm not redoing the whole question now, but just to remind you where we're at. This where we left off. Homework two, part one, question G. We said the question was: Is x equals a cosine omega t plus three point five? a solution to d2x dt squared equals 
we said Sorry, someone's here. Two people are here. Okay. We, I'm just uh, reminding you or generalizing what we said. We took that function, A cosine omega t plus 3.5. We said 3.5 is just an arbitrary number. It, there's no significance to the value itself, but just that it is some value, some numerical constant measured presumably in radians, we said, we said that if you take two derivatives of that function, um, the chain rule each time will bring the omega out, but will not bring the 3.5 out in, into the derivative. Um, so that the second, deriv second time derivative of that function indeed returns that function times omega squared times the negative sign. D in other words, the derivatives act just the same way they would if, if that 3.5 had been a zero. So we said, we noticed, okay, so you can throw in a number into that parenthesis. You can throw an added or subtracted constant into that parenthesis, and it doesn't throw off the nature of the derivatives. It doesn't change the nature of the derivatives. So that you still indeed have a solution to that differential equation. So for any constant theta measured in radians, we decided last time Or are we using A? I guess we're using A here. Okay, this is what we're saying. You can throw a numerical constant, which we're from now on gonna call phi. Phi is that lowercase Greek letter um, that looks like a, a theta turned on its side. From now on, we're gonna realize that phi, there could be a number added into the parentheses and the number could be anything measured in radians, including zero. We're going to realize that up until now, we've just been tacitly assuming that the value of phi was zero, but we're saying now it doesn't have to be zero, and the whole function will still describe a simple harmonic oscillator. I'm just changing the view on the screen. Um, when we throw, uh, when we acknowledge the existence of phi, this new constant in the function, um, 
it's physical. We're going to call it from now on the phase constant. It, 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 this is physics. It's not just supposed to be raw math. Um, so that phi number has got to represent something physically. What we're saying is that it, it, it represents a head start or a delay with regard to phase. What do I mean by phase or what do physicists mean by phase? when we're talking about oscillation we or when we're talking about waves, what we mean by phase is the place in a cycle. Like what your phase is, is where you are with respect to the cycle. Are you at the beginning of the cycle? Are you halfway through the cycle? Are you one quarter of the way through the cycle? That's what we mean by your phase. So to give you a quick example of what it would mean to have a phase constant of something other than zero, let's do one quick example. Just to try to make this clear, I'm going to do the math in a second, just to try to make this physically clear. To a head start or a delay with regard to cycle means that the oscillator, the, the mass on the spring of this, in this case, starts somewhere other than the beginning of the cycle. Tacitly, up until this point, what we've meant by the beginning of the cycle is, is the amplitude position. Like, like, remember in homework one, the mass started all the way at, the, the, the mass had zero velocity when it was at 15 centimeters from the equilibrium position. We let it go from 15 centimeters from the equilibrium position with zero velocity. And it began oscillating from there, began making cycles going there and back and there and back and there and back. The farthest away that it ever got from the equilibrium position was 15 centimeters on either side. So that initial spot of 15 centimeters became its maximum. The initial displacement became the maximum displacement, right? And we counted cycles starting from that maximum displacement. One full cycle would be going all the way from the positive maximum all the way to the negative maximum. That, that would be a half a cycle. And then going all the way back to the positive maximum, that would be a full cycle, right? This is because we said the object started at 15 centimeters. Now, what does it mean that the object started at 15 centimeters? I mean, this is cyclical re re repeated motion. Really, presumably the object starts wherever it starts and it's going on and on and on forever. Um, when we say it starts, what we really mean is when we started paying attention and turning our clock on. Right, the experiment begins at t equals zero, which which is the moment that we start our stopwatch. So what was assumed in homework one is that we started our stopwatch when the object um, was at an amplitude position, at a place of maximum potential energy and minimum kinetic energy. If we were to, and, and the phase constant there was zero, like that was the, the that's the, 
that's the base case. If we were to give a phase constant of pi over two radians, it means we pi over two radians means a quarter cycle because there are two pi radians to every cycle. So if we were to give the uh, uh, oscillator um, a phase constant of pi over two, it means we're waiting or we're jumping the gun by a quarter of a cycle to start our stopwatch. Let's be specific and do the math here. I'll see, see what I mean. Like, Okay, I'm about warning. So I'm going to read this out loud or say this out loud. And then I'm going to ask you a question in the chat. Not a hard one, not a tricky one, but just especially because I know I'm just talking to myself right now. Um, just to do this example of what the phase constant means, like what's physical significance, I'm saying like assume phi equals zero, which is the assumption for all the early solutions we were doing before this, before we realized there was a phase constant. Then if then if, if, if phi equals zero, right, then, then at t equals zero for a give typical harmonic oscillator, x equals a, right? Like, the, 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 it'll, I mean, you plug in zero for t and you take the cosine of zero, you get one, right? So, so that's just to reestablish the base case that, that if you say there's no phase constant, it means you're starting your stopwatch when the mass is at the amplitude position. I'm calling it A in this example. We could call it X naught. It's the same thing. But the point is we've set our clock at the beginning of the cycle or the, or the thing starts its cycle when the time begins. But if we set phi to, for example, this is an example. If we set phi to pi over two, right? Same exact oscillator. Then that's just like recalibrating the initial place. It's like an initial position, a head start or a delay of the oscillator, but measured in fractions of a cycle. If we say that phi is pi over two, then that means that when our watch started, when our stopwatch started at t equals zero, then x equals a cosine of zero, all right, to be clear, sorry, maybe I skipped a step here. It's still x equals a cosine of zero, but uh, omega t still equals zero, but now it's zero plus pi over two. So I'm going to pause now and ask you in the chat, what is, and please tell me in the direct chat, and I'm going to wait till I get three people in the direct chat, in the direct chat, what is the cosine of pi over two radians, and therefore, what is x at t equals zero 
if phi equals pi over two radians. So I'm going to ask the question again. I'm not going to go on until I get, I mean, hello, good morning. What can I tell you? Um, I want to know, so what I want to know is the cosine, not of zero, but of pi over two radians. And you want to start being able to do this. Remember, uh, there's a number of different ways to do this. I mean, you could do it on your calculator as long as you're, that's good. That is one person in the direct chat. And that one person is right, by the way. I'm still waiting. But yay, you, if you wrote in the direct chat, you're the one I'm talking to. Yay, thank you. And double congratulations to you. And I'm, I'm still going to, so that's awesome. I'm going to wait for two more people to do it. That, oh, I think I see through. Oh, there's some, people are rocking. This is good. You really are with me here. Hold on. Um, okay, wait. So, and I'm asking, oh, there's a lot of people. Wow, people just rock this. One, two, three. That's awesome. Okay, yet, yeah. okay, I'm not going to respond to everybody individually. Whoa, because you guys, you really are with me. Thank you. That's awesome. Um, and the question might have been unclear to like a couple of people because a lot of people participated. Thank you. And if you participate at all, again, submit for points, blah, blah, blah. Now, I will say I'm, at, I'm asking a numerical question. I'm not asking for an English word here. I'm asking what is, oh, and I see, but the cosine, the cosine of zero was one. Was that was the answer from before? The cosine of zero was one. So when phi was well, so the answer I'm looking for here, the answer I'm looking for here is indeed zero. That is the answer. And again, congratulations and thank you to all of you who just participated. I can see who you are. I'm not going to respond to each one of you, but yeah, the answer here is zero, which I can see how some of you might say like it, the answer is the amplitude, but that's the answer to the last one. That's the answer when phi equals zero. If phi equals pi, or, and so please write me in the direct chat if you don't understand what I'm saying right now. I'm like, if you just accidentally got it wrong, that's fine. Um, but let's make sure we understand. I'm saying the cosine of pi over two is zero. And by the way, why do we know that? I mean, yes, you could plug it in your calculator. You're allowed. But I, I like to think of the unit circle. And pi over two means a quarter circle, a quarter cycle. So it it means what's the cosine of this angle of of if you open up a night what you might call a 90 degree angle, a right angle and uh, and you pick that point at the top of the circle, the point whose coordinates are 0 comma 1, right? The cosine is 0 of a, a pi over two radians. What does that mean in terms of physics? What does that mean in terms of the mass on the spring? It means we're saying, if I talk about a spring whose phase constant is pi over two, if I talk about, if I write down, it, it's saying from now on, I could write down an equation for a spring that looks like this, a mass on a spring or any oscillator. Sorry, that's illegible. If I write that down, really, whether this is a plus or a minus, but if I write that down, that's identical to just a regular oscillator, A cosine omega T. But this one, it means I didn't start my stopwatch until the mass was already a quarter of its way into the cycle. What's a quarter of the way into the cycle? It would mean at the equilibrium position. Right, because a full cycle means going all the way from amplitude all the way to negative amplitude and all the way back to amplitude. So that's a full cycle. So a half cycle means going from amplitude to negative amplitude on the other side. That's a half cycle. A quarter cycle means going to the middle to equilibrium. So if you started your stopwatch a quarter of a cycle in, and again, please, if if you got if you made a mistake on that one, could you just please tell me in direct chat if you're okay now? That's all I just like it makes it tell me if it makes sense now, or if you have a different question. I, I oh, oh, great question in the direct chat. Wait a second. Um, okay, I think I know why there's a confusion. Okay, great question in the direct chat. Let me back up for a second. Um, how can I put it? There's a great question in the direct chat that uses, and in the direct chat, the word node is being used. That is a great word. And we, and I know you've been hearing about it in lab and we're heading toward that word, but I can see why there might be a little confusion. Let me make clear. I haven't used that word yet here. We're going toward that like any minute now. 
But I think the reason there's a little confusion, that word node has to do with waves. We're not quite in lecture yet up, we're about to be. I mean, that is where I'm heading with this ship. But right now I'm literally just talking about a oscillator, one oscillator. So there's actually no concept yet of nodes or anti-nodes or anything like that. All there is is something going back and forth and back and forth. And I'm saying that the one equation to describe something going back and forth. Okay, so hold on. I very much appreciate that question. Okay, just to be, um, wait, oh, oh, wait, wait, okay, okay, wait, okay, now, so wait, there's another, I appreciate the person in the direct chat who's like telling me that they do get what I'm saying, I totally appreciate that, and please submit for points and all of that, but now, now there's another question in the chat that, and this is good, guys, really, like, there is a little confusion in the chat or in the, but this is what's good about using the chat, because I'm going to tell you right now that at least two of you are privately telling me something that's very similar to each other. And to be blunt, it's two very smart people. I mean, you're all very smart. But I mean, there's two people that I know do their work and all that I know are paying attention. And I, of course, that's true of everybody. But like, seriously, two people that are definitely like not spacing out in general, who... um. God, there's no way I could say that without feeling I'm insulting somebody else. I'm sorry. But I just want to make it clear because I'm so happy in a way with the risk that at least two people are taking here. Two people are showing me that they have a very similar like issue in their minds. And it's direct chat. So, I mean, unless they're sitting next to each other, like there's at least two people in the room that are making clear that there's an issue here that I need to straighten out. And I'm sure if those are the two people that are conscious of it in their minds and are having the guts to say it in chat, it's got to apply to more than just them. And I would imagine that there are people in the room that have a slight confusion going on that I want to address now that don't even know they have that confusion. So let me, so thank you. So this is what's good about class, about actually engaging class, okay? So now maybe I'm about to say something that maybe some of you know, maybe, I don't know, but Whatever I'm about to say is more worth, more worth anything that I was intending to say. Please know, this is not a digression. This is the point of class. Here's the deal. The thing that I just wrote on this page, it might look sort of like old news, but the thing I want to really clarify is that we are right now talking about the equation for one oscillator, one thing that is going back and forth cyclically in time. One thing, like one thing that you can make a graph of, and on this axis would be time, and on this axis would be, okay, if it's a mass on a spring, would be one dimension of space. Or if it's a bob on a pendulum string, would be one like angular dimension of space, would be like an arc length. Or if this were homework three, for example, this axis would represent temperature. 
But what we're talking about right now, and this is very important to everybody. What I mean, in lecture and in the homeworks, what I'm discussing right now is one system that has one measurable property that we're looking at, like maybe position on an x-axis, for example, one measurable property that's fluctuating in time, fluctuating as the clock ticks. So it's what, and that whatever that property is, we're saying is harmonically oscillating in time. The easiest thing to, to picture, the one that we always go back to in our minds, is a mass going back and forth on one x-axis as the clock ticks. What we're arguing right now, and I'm saying this to everybody, and again, this is a very... I'm going to address the questions even more explicitly in a moment. But what I'm saying to everybody is the math that we're looking at is how to describe any one harmonic oscillator, which honestly means any one system that behaves identically, mathematically, to a mass on a spring going back and forth and back and forth. But let me say again, I know how boring and possibly confusing it is that we've spent so long discussing one mass going back and forth on one spring. Believe, I, that is so boring, I know. It's not even just bad enough that it's boring. It's so boring that some of your brains, oh, and also you're, you've moved on in lab and are doing other things, which I want to acknowledge in a second, but I know that some of your brains just can't even imagine that we're still talking about the same freaking thing for weeks and weeks and weeks. The reason we are is because we're using the mass on a spring as a model for tons of different phenomena in the world that all act like this, whether it be pendulum strings or temperature systems or subatomic um, probability amplitudes, which is what it is in PCHEM, okay? We're talking about a model, a mathematical model for systems all throughout nature that all do this tick-tock, tick-tock thing, okay? Now, some of your brains are deciding that we just can't possibly be still talking about that one thing. So your brains reasonably are moving on and deciding there must be other things going on here, especially because you've seen some things in lab. In other words, what some of your brains are doing is going to the issue of waves. Now, I do want to get us there, and I will by the end of this period, but I have to be very, but waves are very hard. Well, I shouldn't say that. Waves are complicated. They are built from more than one thing. They're built from this ingredient. Right now, we're making sure for the last possible minute in the last class, we're making sure that we have this one ingredient solidified in our mind. This ingredient is the one oscillator. This is not yet a wave. What I'm really trying to say with that, like spoiler alert or whatever, is this is not a wave yet. There's a relationship between waves and oscillators, which we're trying to build here. And I swear I will in like, like, like seven minutes, but I can't build that relationship. It's like, if we're gonna, I mean, not to be cheesy, but if we're gonna like build a cake out of like flour and eggs, you need flour and you need eggs intact and pure before you put them together and add heat and other things and make it a cake like and i'm not joking like if you started off with egg flour or floury eggs you've already jumped the gun and like now we can't put the things together to so i'm saying this is not a wave yet this is an awesome and i'm not yelling at anybody i'm literally excited that someone at least knew just enough to know they were confused to bring this up this is an oscillator this is one oscillator by throwing in the face, and I swear I'm going to move on, and to, I will. But let me first make sure that what this phase constant term is, and we needed that to transition from one standard oscillator to, to where you guys are going in your heads and where you've been going in the labs. What this phase constant means, now to answer the second question in the direct chat, what the phase constant is, uh, oh, so this question in the chat says, so just clarifying, does the phase constant mean the displacement from the wave's equilibrium position? That's what the chat says. Now, and also, I'm not trying to be picky. I'm not arguing or criticizing anybody in the chat, I swear. And I feel really defensive because I feel like they've done something really, really good, but gutsy. And if I'm not careful, they're not going to do it again. And I want them to do it again. The, the person put in the chat said... Um, just clarifying the phase, just clarifying the phase constant. What it means? They're trying to put in their own words, which is what you should do. They said, "Is it the displacement from the wave's equilibrium position?" Okay, it's a really good question. On the one, 
first of all, so is it displacement from the equilibrium position? Yes, in a way, it, the phase constant tells us how far displaced from the equilibrium. Let me correct. Okay, to be more, it, what it really is, if anything, is displacement from the amplitude position. What it really is, is how far the mass or the oscillator was from the amplitude position when we started timing. What I mean by that, if you look at the math that I just did on this page, what I mean by that is if there's no phase constant, if the phase constant is zero, which is what we sort of been assuming for the last few weeks, if like we didn't even know the phase constant was there, it was just zero. So we like didn't even know, like we weren't even thinking about it. But what we really were saying in retrospect was the phase constant equals zero. When the phase constant equals zero, what this math is trying to show on this page is that means that we started our stopwatch when the mass really was right at the amplitude position. It was not at all like, right? Like X equals A, X equals A at T equals zero, like at T equals zero, X equals A if phi equals zero. Phi is like a condition. If you're setting phi equal to zero, if you're saying there's no phase constant, then that means, oh, we're starting our experiment. We're starting our stopwatch. Sorry, I'm just trying to get rid of the view. Okay. We're starting our stopwatch when the mass is out here at amplitude. And so the beginning of our timing is the beginning of the traditional beginning of a full cycle. We're starting our stopwatch when the thing is actually not moving at all when it has maximum potential energy and therefore zero kinetic energy. Like we're starting our stopwatch at the natural beginning of a cycle. I mean, it's that's what zero phi would mean. But if we set phi equal to pi over two, what that means is that we're waiting pi over two radians before we click our stopwatch. So it means that when our stop or, or yeah, it means that. So it means that when our stopwatch started, when time equals zero, the mass was already, it was, it was already a pi over two radians, one quarter cycle into its motion. It was already at the equilibrium position. It was like pi over two radians away from amplitude. It was at X equals zero. Like, please remember X equals zero means the equilibrium position. All right, I think you are remembering that. That's why you asked that in the chat. So I'm, but I'm saying phi is not the same thing as X. Phi is a measurement of what X is when T equals zero. It, in the base case, when phi equals zero, the ba let me highlight this. One. The base case, like when phi equals zero, that means that at T equals zero, X equals A. That's the base case. Like when there's no phase constant, we start our stopwatch at the edge of oscillation. But if we make our phase constant anything else, that means we started timing somewhere into the cycle. So if B equals pi over two, that means that at T equals zero, X equals zero. B is a measurement of what X is at T equals zero. But what? But how far X is away from, not equilibrium really, but how far away it is from amplitude. I don't know if that's confusing or not. That, that, that's what I'm saying. I'm going to pause for a second to see if that sinks in. But the biggest thing I want to say at all, again, this is a compliment. Notice, please do not confuse my voice for anger. My voice is now suddenly I'm awake and I'm engaged because like someone is giving me something to work with in the class. Like otherwise I'm just like droning. Okay. And I know this is a classic confusion. I know this is a classic confusion. The people who just said something, they didn't just suddenly become dumb. They're not dumb at all. They're actually really smart because they're actually articulating something that really, really infects people's minds for every semester. But usually they're not, I'm not lucky enough to know who is noticing that when. Okay, so first thing is I'm saying B is a measurement of where the oscillator is at T equals zero. But if you like relative to amplitude, not, not so much relative to, Equilibrium, if that makes sense, even though equilibrium is called X equals zero. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Oh, cool. I'm seeing things in the chat. That's good. That's good. Okay, yeah. Now, good. Thank you, person in chat. I guess both people have both. Thank you. Both people have. So both people in chat, like seriously, please apply for like eight 
not apply, but, you know, submit for like 400 different points here. Really, you just like to find the whole class, both of you. Um, but now let me all, I'm going to, I am going to move on. But also there was another it's honest thing in the direct chat. The, just know that both the people in the chat, they use the word waves. And I know it's just words. I know. And if I were in their position, I'd be like, oh yeah, I didn't mean that. I meant this. And it's fine. I know it's just, but I want all of you to know that the words are popping out unconsciously. A lot of you are already thinking about, or half consciously, you might be picturing waves because of, yeah, because you're doing it in lab. I know that, of course. And that makes, and it's like really hard all of a sudden what you were doing in lab. And it all seems like we're talking about cosines in the lecture. And it seems like we're talking about cosines in the lab. So it all seems like one big thing. It's one big progression but it's not one same thing. Here's where I'm going. So I want to now, the reason I introduced fee, uh, the reason we all introduced fee is fee is the bridge to get us from oscillation to waves. Waves are built from oscillations, but waves are, but not all oscillations are waves. All waves do involve oscillations but not all oscillations are waves. Everything in like all of homework one, homework two and homework three, they're all about oscillation, a single system going back and forth and going back and forth and back and forth. And here's the real, uh, to make it as clear as I possibly can, and I'm gonna move on. Possibly the most important physical distinction I can make. So now that I can bridge this and start going on. And, but again, thank you people in the chat and please everybody else, please get the message that what, like saying things in the chat that like sort of reveal some kind of maybe not perfect understanding or perfectly correct thing are so valuable. And if you're even, I'm going to say this last time, I don't know why I'm so over secure. Oh, I mean like insecure about this, but if God, if if electron forbid anywhere in the soul of either of the two people that puts it in the direct chat, if either of them are thinking anything like, or if any of you are ever thinking, yeah, yeah, I get he's praising his praising because he wants us to try and he wants us to pay attention and he doesn't want to talk to himself in the mirror. So he likes it when we talk in the chat, but come on still for all of his yatta, 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 for all of what Yavram's saying, he still now noticed that two people like didn't fully understand what he was talking about. So obviously he's carrying a judgment in his mind now, like no matter what he's over praising, he's now going to walk away thinking that those two people don't actually understand the material. So like now they're like, he's being polite, but they're being held in a negative judgment. And you might be thinking, and I never want him to think that I don't understand what's going on. Like God forbid, but like, no, like really no. If you actually knew what I, what I actually, it's the exact opposite. Okay. I've been doing this long enough that I don't think anybody understands anything until the, if you really want to know the truth, I don't think anybody understands anything until about the hundredth time we've gone through this. I'm shocked when it, well, a lot of times when people say they understand what's going on, if you really want to know the truth, I think they're lying. And I say that totally in a friendly, loving way. Okay. I've done, I've done this too many times and I've done work through it myself too many times to have any illusion that even the first seven times I told myself I got it I, about, about on the 12th time when I actually started on the 12th time I got something that I was like, oh my God, those first seven times that I even thought I did, I didn't even see it at all. I was just kidding myself. Like, and I'm saying that with compassion. Don't think that I judge anybody negatively for any admission that they don't fully understand something the first time I say it. I it, It's quite the reverse. I It actually makes me think that they're really smart and really, really have a chance at this material. Just saying. Um, now, this is one oscillator. One oscillator is a particle. One, even though we've spent all this time on this and we had to because we had to introduce all this new abstract math for describing this one system, this one system that we've been looking at for months now, this mass going back and forth on a spring. For all of the new advanced math that we apply to it, 
It's technically still classical mechanics. It's technically still something that Newton or Hook or like the 18th century guys could have studied with their knowledge of particles, of thingy things. What we still have here is an identifiable, discrete, massive, particular, tangible, countable, defined, distinguishable item of material that is going from here to here and back to here. Any motion that this thing is doing, even if it's very fast and very mathematically rich, it is carving out trajectories in space. We could say the mass is here and then it 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 is there, right? That is a thingy thing, that mass on the spring. It's a thingy thing. It is a particle, which is technically classical mechanics. But the reason that we introduce the phase constant, so the reason Okay, the reason we introduce phi, so phi is like a head start or a delay in the cycle. Phi represents that you started your stopwatch other, that you started your stopwatch someplace when the mass was already moving, not at the obvious place where it was, had slowed all the way down to rest and was about to turn around, right? You, fed, you set phi equal to non-zero when you started your stopwatch at some non-obvious place. Well, of course it raises the question, why would you ever do that? Like, what's the point? I mean, isn't physics supposed to be a matter of setting our own coordinate system and making our own choices that make the analysis as convenient as possible? And yes, it is. Like all the laws of physics are the same in all inertial reference frames, in all unaccelerated coordinate systems. So all coordinate systems are equivalent. We decide on our coordinate system and we decide to make it the one that's the most convenient possible. That is what we always do in physics. So what, um, and the answer is we do. We do set phi to be the most convenient thing we possibly can, as long as we have one oscillator. But if we have more than one oscillator that start at different places in their cycle, then we have no choice but to keep track of where each oscillator started in its cycle. One might start at the obvious place and we'll call it phi zero. But if the other one started somewhere else, then, then we've got to identify that with a different value of phi. In other words, what I'm saying is, The answer is when we have multiple oscillators and this now, so, so the purpose of phi is to allow for multiple oscillators oscillating at the same time. This is what's now going to set us up for the implications of the two people in the chat. And, and I hate to keep saying two. I mean, there, I think there was actually one more, but two people that were in a very detailed in the chat. I mean, there was tons of people in the chat. I'm sorry. You, you know what I'm saying? Um, I want to get to multiple oscillators now because this will get us, you'll start to see now what it is that you've been doing in lab and why and where it comes from all this lecture thing. So let's,
Whoa, hello. Okay, this is a lot of English here. Obviously, I'm not going to make this mathematical. I'm going to draw a diagram and set you up. We have 23 minutes. Let me just say what this says. What we're going to do now is put together the simplest possible, meaningful collection of, of identical oscillators. We're going to put together a whole, in our minds, I mean, in our, but it turns out you have done this in the lab. Now you'll see if you don't see already. We're going to imagine, we're going to consider a huge bunch of oscillators. And all the oscillators are exactly the same type of oscillator. But we're going to arrange them all in almost the simplest possible way. Almost the simple. I call it the simplest meaningful way. The simplest way we can arrange a whole bunch of identical oscillators is we could set them all up identically. We could take, for example, uh, we could take, for example, a bunch of vertical oscillators and lay them all out on a horizontal axis, like one next to each other, all evenly spaced, uniformly distributed, right? We could do, so we could put like a mass on a spring here and a mass on a spring here and a mass on a spring there. And then we could like raise them all up, start them all like at the amplitude position at the same time and let them go and all do exactly the same thing, just all next to each other. We could do that. That would be very simple. That would actually be slightly simpler than what we're going to do. But what would happen is we would see all the oscillators go like this, down, up, down, up, down, up, right? And that's beautiful. That'd be very nice. It'd be like a bunch of like, like dancers, like um, the Rockettes or something at Christmas. I, I don't, right? They would all just go down, up, down, up uniformly. The problem with that is, and that we could study that, but that is so simple and so symmetric that in fact, it wouldn't be meaningful at all because everybody, all the oscillators would do something together. So it would really be as if we just had one huge wide spring going up and down and up and down. We wouldn't in any way be taking advantage of the fact that we had multiple oscillators. If we want to study a multiplicity of oscillators and do any do something simple, but maybe interesting or meaningful with it, we're going to go one step above what I just described. And I'm going to do this mathematically, but what we're going to imagine is a bunch of identical vertical oscillators, like they all have the same K, they all have the same M, therefore they all have the same omega. We're going to imagine a bunch of identical vertical oscillators. We're going to distribute them uniformly along a horizontal axis. Like that's what this says, right? Let's consider identical vertical oscillators distributed uniformly throughout horizontal space. But the one thing we're going to do is we're going to stagger them in phase. We're going to give them each a different phase constant so that they're not all going up and down together. They're all going to do the exact same thing, same amplitude, same omega, all that all do it in vertical space, all do it next to each other in horizontal space. But we're going to imagine that they each have a phase constant that is a step, a constant step different from the last phase constant. Like maybe this one has a phase constant of zero and this one has pi over two and this one has two pi over two and this one is three pi over two and this one has four pi, right? That would be the simplest possible meaningful arrangement of oscillators. So they're all, right, sort of like this.
Okay, so we're imagining. We have a bunch of these oscillators. They each have the same K and the same M, every single one of them, right? And they're each free to oscillate vertically at that same omega. Um, and then we'll give them each the same amplitude, A, also, okay? All that is the same. And we spread them out along a horizontal axis. So we put the first one at the edge of a meter stick at zero centimeters or something. And we put the next one at one centimeter, so, right? Et cetera, et cetera. So each of these oscillators does the exact same thing, but we start, we start them at different places in the cycle when the stopwatch starts, right? So the equation of the first one, let's call it Y zero. Well, the equation of the first, stop that. The, the equation of the first one might be like A cosine omega T plus zero, right? Now, and in this example, I'm imagining that, well, I'm imagining that the first one, we just start at the amplitude position, the, the, the zeroth one. Then the next one, the Y, the spring that's at position one centimeter along the X axis, that next one has an equation, A cosine omega T, but plus, let's say, for example, pi over two, times one, right? So like our example that we did a minute ago on the board. So whereas the first one is starting at amplitude position, the next one's starting, let's say, at equilibrium position, right? And then let's imagine that the next one is starting at two times pi over two. In other words, uh, uh, at pi. So the other one's starting at the opposite amplitude position. You see what I'm saying? Like, like, in other words, this would be y equals zero, the, the middle place, right? Um, and so then the next, so I'm imagining, I'm imagining that each one is pi over two is a quarter cycle ahead of, or behind the one before it. Right, so the so it's just a pattern. Right, if you imagine this, and stop me in the chat if, if you don't. So now, now we're talking about a bunch of oscillators, each one with their own equation. And they're all the same, except they all have a different phase constant. And that's the phase constant is that number that we're keeping track of that's based on uh, which oscillator it is. Like the zero with oscillator, zero with edge of the meter stick has no phase constant at all. So it was at the amplitude position when our stopwatch started. Then the next oscillator is one centimeter into the horizon, into the X axis. So it started pi over two radians ahead of its neighbor, right? And then the next one is, I'm saying the same thing over and over again, but I'm just trying to say that it, the example I'm making is pi over two. There's nothing special about the number pi over two, but I'm imagining what if each one of, what if you laid out a bunch of identical oscillators and gave each one a phase constant, gave each one a delay or a head start that was directly based on where it was in the line, right? Like the third one has like three, pi over two phase shifts ahead of the edge. Every time I try to say, oh, wait for a while. Oh, wait, did I do it wrong? No, it is, wait. It is, wait, sorry, great question. Hold on, great question in the direct chat. For So like I'm saying, y over two would be, pi would be, the y over two one is a cosine omega t plus pi over two times two, which is two. I just wrote it out slowly so you could just see the pattern. But yeah, it would be two pi over two. Just like the one right before it is pi over two times one. And the one before that is pi over two times zero. Wait, a person in the direct chat, could you tell me if I just clarified or not? Because that's a great question. Again, 
Oh, okay, no problem. No, it's my the way I wrote it was confused. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So, all right, so then that question helps me. I, so I think it's sort of clear. So I'm making a pattern here. Now, and we have 13 minutes left. Right now, what I have is now a bunch of oscillators next to each other. Each oscillator has its own equation, right? But I could put these equations together. We're almost, so we're almost at a big place here. What I'm saying so far is if you look, Okay, in this example, in this example, I chose pi over two radians. That's just an example, pi over two, but pi over two is a nice example because it's a quarter of a cycle, right? So it's like the pi over two is like the difference between amplitude and middle or middle and other and negative amplitude, right? Because a full cycle is two pi. So pi over two means a quarter of a cycle. A quarter of a cycle means from one edge of the cycle to the center. To, to the equilibrium, right? So in this example, each um, each uh, uh, oscillator was staggered in phase by, oh, and there goes my board, by another quarter cycle compared to the last one. Let me just put the board back, hold on one second. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay. Um, me, 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 me. Okay. Um, so pi over two was the example of the phase step, the step in phase in this case. So if you just look, and I'm glad the direct chat person is, and there was a new direct chat person, which I totally know and appreciate. Um, he or she was, no, was like trying to make sense of or noticing the pattern in the parentheses, the phase, like, so for the fourth oscillator, it's four pi over twos compared to the zeroth, right? Each next oscillator is another one pi over two compared to its neighbor. They're each stepped in phase by pi over two. So if you go all the way out and look at what its phase constant is measured from zero, it's, if you go to the fifth meter on the x-axis, you're going to find that it has, a in this example, a phase constant of five times pi over two in this example, right? So all of those different equations could be summarized in one fell swoop where we could just say, oh, I get it. If I want to know where any given oscillator is on the vertical axis, I do A cosine omega t, but then I like what we were saying here is here, in other words, here, for any given oscillator, its phase is, and here in this case, is pi over two times x, where x is how far out it is on the x-axis. This is all assuming that they're uniformly distributed on the x-axis, right? So it's like a little formula within the formula. It says, if you want to know what, where the thing started in its cycle, ask how far out it is and multiply that by pi over two and you'll know where it is in the cycle so we could summarize I mean, we could we could capture this entire collection of oscillators with this one equation but we've got nine minutes we're almost at something super general here almost but i want to go but not quite yet there i'm summarizing all of these oscillators with this one equation but this exam but i but it's assuming this example of pi over two pi over two it, the step doesn't need to be pi over two. The step 
could be any number of radians per meter. Notice it could be any, right? Um, that pi over two is how many radians out of phase a given um, oscillator is per the number of meters, right? Like we just said a second ago, if we look at an oscillator that's five meters out, then we plug in five meters for X, we multiply by pi over two radians per meter, the meters cancel and we have that its phase constant is five pi over two radians, right? So pi over two didn't have to be pi over two. It could have been any number of radians as long as, uh, it could have been any number as long as that number showed how many extra radians we step up for each additional meter that we are in the formation, right? If you think about it, we're just saying that the number that your phase constant for any given oscillator, your phase constant is directly proportional to how far out you are in this formation. The farther out you are, the higher your phase constant is. It's a direct proportionality, a straight line. The slope of that line in this case was pi over two radians per meter, but it could be any number of radians per meter. Let's from now on call that number of radians per meter the, the size of the step, so K equals the size of the phase step. Then we could write our, our one equation that captures this whole collection. We could write that equation like this. We could say Y equals A cosine omega T plus or minus K X. Where, and this is a new K. I'm sorry that it's the letter K again. It's not the K of Hooke's Law. This is a totally different K. You could make it lowercase if you want, or you could put serifs on it like I do. I'm sorry that it's a K, but it just is a K. This K is the K of radians per meter, just like omega is radians per second. K is radians per meter, and it allows us to capture this entire set of multiple phase staggered oscillators in one equation. So I've got five minutes left. That's plenty of time for me to drill this in. Here's the punchline coming, okay? And I and please pay attention to this. If you pay, if whether you've been bored and not paying attention or you've been trying, but it's all been confusing, try to get this. Five minutes is twice as much time as we have for me to say it, but it's a fraction of how long it takes to think about it. I'm saying this equation right here which of course you've seen elsewhere, this equation captures a collection of identical oscillators distributed evenly in one axis of space, but staggered in phase by a constant amount based on that space. This is a collection of oscillators that are arranged horizontally oscillating vertically but each but each one of which has a, a delay or a head start that's totally based on where it is in the horizontal space right that's what this equation says this is a function of two variables it says if you want to know at any moment how high an oscillator is, you need to specify when you're looking and where you're looking. If you know when you're looking and where you're looking, then you'll know how high a given oscillator is. 
This is a collection of phase staggered oscillators. But what you know, and what hopefully brings us full circle is this number K that I just defined, this K, which is radians per meter rather than radians per second, this K, which is telling us how the cosinusoidal oscillations are staggered in space, this K is also known from lab as the angular wave number. Once this K is put into this equation, once this equation is a cosine of T and of X, then this whole thing now, this collection of phase staggered oscillators, now this is a wave. Now this thing is a wave. A wave is a collection of oscillators. A wave is a system of objects, each of which is oscillating in time cosinusoidally, while the whole arrangement is arranged in space cosinusoidally. A wave is oscillations in time and in space at the same time. A wave is oscillations of oscillations. This is a wave. And what I mean by it in English, as you know, like if you picture, right? If you picture, if you picture a whole bunch of oscillators, a whole bunch horizontally, all going up and down, but but in different phases, but in phases that are in a pattern, right? When this one's up, this one's in the middle. When this one's in the middle, this one's down. When this one's down, this one's... If all of the oscillations are arranged in a pattern like this, what you see is crests and troughs moving horizontally back and forth across the space. We have one more minute. This is now a wave for the first time in that. When you look at this whole thing from behind and you see, like at first you look and you see a bunch of things going like this, but then you look and you'll see a mountain crest, a peak go across and you'll be like, oh, that crest just traveled five meters in three seconds. And you'd be right. And you'd say, oh, therefore I can extrapolate and I could say it's speed and I could say it could travel 10 meters in six seconds, da, 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 da. The it, and you could do all this physics, right? And you'd be right. You see motion now, you see motion of something propagating horizontally along the horizontal axis. And the thing that's propagating along the horizontal axis is like a bump or a trough or whatever. And you see it and you can measure it in space and time and reproduce it and predict it. It is scientific motion, but, and we have like 30 seconds left, but the thing that you're observing and measuring and predicting go across an horizontal space is not a thing. Right? That mountaintop is not, if this was all a bunch of metal going up and down and up and down, all that's moving is metal. And you'll see predictable motion across a horizontal space, but there is no metal ever moving across a horizontal space. You'll see a crest go from one end to the other end from one lab partner holding a string to another lab partner, and you could time it in space and all that. But there is no piece of metal that ever goes from one lab partner to the other. This is a wave pulse. This is our first non-thingy thing. This non-thingy thing called a wave pulse is composed of oscillations of oscillations of thingy things. This is cosinusoidal oscillations in space and time simultaneously. That is what's necessary to make a wave. So the fundamental ingredient is cosinusoidal oscillations, but they're happening along two axes at the same time, at a minimum, for this wave to occur. So this is a wave. That, okay, and that's it. I'm sorry, that's it. Okay, have a nice, yes, goodbye. Thank you. Sorry, that's it. We'll talk more on Wednesday. Thanks. Have a great day. Yes. Have a good day, Professor. Have a good day. Have a good day. Thank you, guys. Okay. Bye. Have a great, yes, have a great afternoon.